by small regions. We've got to look at the whole, and we're going to do that with our sustainability fund that will be coming out in several weeks, and the Department of Northern Funding Availability. In those plans, we're going to ask for a series of things that involve place. Now, I'll tell you what those place means to us. First of all, we're going to ask for a narrative, and that narrative's going to say, who did you talk to? Now, normally what we get on grants is somebody tells us what the chamber is and somebody tells us what you know the banks go. And we're simply saying, no, we want to know what the community feels. And did you talk to community representatives about what their goals would be and the actions they want to have undertaken in a sustainable environment? So we're going to look at that narrative and see whether they talk to everybody. When we went out for our advanced notice of funding availability, our notice of, of funding, since we're advanced notice, we can't call it a funding availability. Advance notice. We got a lot of feedback. People said, well, they never talked to CBC. Uh, they never talked to groups representing the homeless. They never talked to groups of color. They never talked. And we've said in our notice, we're going to expect that they talk to everybody. Because you cannot talk about sustainability with a few. You've got to talk to sustainability with anybody who's interested in moving forward in that environment. And we're going to insist on that. And we're going to guide our funding to accomplish that. We're working with the U.S. Department of Transportation because they will be on our team. When the grants come in, they will be there to evaluate. When the grants are awarded, they're going to be there to evaluate. We're also going to have EPA when people come in, when the grants come in, as well as when, because uh, they're going to be involved intimately through our, our point system, and we're going to be working with USDA because we want their comments, particularly on the rural side. Idea is not to have agreements, but to have working relationships that are established to get everybody's perspective. Transportation people don't know about the built environment on the housing side. None of us know how EPA works on clean air, clean water, and clean dirt. But we realize it's important for us to look at how regional plans on sustainability and livability are developed so that we can accomplish what we call an integrated system. It doesn't mean, though, that we can't have individ individual areas in it that are going to be targeted initially. We're going to look for that as well. But our goal is will the entire community benefit? As I have said, in Keene County, which was an extraordinary place to live, I still live there, I can go back to see my family, I feel like a traveler there, a traveler here, but nonetheless, the, uh, the one thing that we found in the eighth richest county in the United States is that we could predict health outcomes by zip code, long-term earnings of children by zip code, illness rates by uh, uh, zip code, tooth decay rates by zip code, I mean, there's a whole series of things. What we're going to say in those grants, how are you going to deal with that? Do not come back to us and say, wow, the prosperous will always prosper. We're saying that the rising tide must lift all boats. Sustainability is not the exclusive domain of the rich. It has to be for everyone. We expect to see a regional narrative that brings that about. We want to see the fullness of the For instance, we want to know whether or not we're going to see opportunities spread throughout regions. We have two goals on the civil rights side of us. One is that we are obligated by law and are going to be vigorous in it at saying that people have to have opportunities, choice, what we call the American way. Just be able to choose and communities should embrace that inclusivity. But we're also saying in communities that have been impacted already that restoration of those communities is a high priority as well. We cannot deal with zip codes in poor communities by telling people to move. There isn't enough capacity to move. So we're saying do restoration and provide new opportunities, which you've got to do both, and we're expecting to see that. The, uh, we want, in, as I said to people this morning, HUD is going through a major internal change. We're moving decisions down to the field and regional offices. <clears throat> One is because we can get things done faster, which would really be nice. Um, and especially when you're at that local level, the rubber hits the road, time is never an hour. And I have pointed that out again and again and again. I mean, I had an issue come up in Milwaukee yesterday, that's where I was in Milwaukee yesterday, that involves the driveway. And we're asking for it to be handled by headquarters. It's a driveway. <laughs> I said, all of this, it's a driveway. I'm looking and saying, tell me this, this isn't going back to headquarters. They said, no, no. Headquarters asked us that's for analysis. I said, it's a driveway. <laughs> Down with the driveways. We're going to transfer that. But nonetheless, a regional and field office could handle that with dispatch. And in this case, we have ongoing construction. 
And that driveway isn't an insignificant issue because they want to build on it. And we should transfer it because there's no issue about taking this away, integrating it to a better use. But the construction is taking place now, which is why it's time, it's not an ally. So that's why we're moving decision making down to our field regional offices. So when we talk to you about sustainability and livability, we're going to talk to them. We're going to ask them to tell us whether or not what we're getting back in these grants is real. Whether people have been listened to. And I would tell all of you who may participate in the SOFA process to get hold of those field regional offices, because they will be called. We want, we say true things out. We want to know, is this, you know, come on, is this just really good grantspersonship, or is this something that's going to be meaningful in the long run to improving all communities? We're going to have a catalytic fund in our 2011 budget. And the catalytic fund has a, what we're trying to do now is we want to know what, we want to know what the game-changing interventions are that people can think of. It's $150 million. And it has one goal. We need to see something that is dramatic, that is viral, that is sea changing in a community. What is that one thing that we funded it would ignite all other things? And it'll be a competitive grant, but we want to be able to tackle that kind of brilliance that we know is there. I call it the collective genius at the local level. HUD believes in local decision making. And HUD believes that we, our partners at the local level, are going to make or break us. This morning in the meeting, I had to tell people the nonprofits and the faith based communities will be the determining factor as to whether the issues that we wish to tackle on poverty, location, better housing, changing health care outcomes, integration of transportation and uh, the built environment, clean air, clean water, and clean dirt. Whether any of those things will happen will depend upon many of you in this room. In fact, all of you in this room. Mm -hmm. All of you. <laughs> USDA and I, we can all sit around and develop grand plans. And we will. <laughs> we, can, we will. I mean, you know, we can just tell you what wonderful things we want you to do. But I've always said, if we don't make the investments in you, then it never occurs. It becomes a grand plan. So life is too short for great ideas and no action. 